Um, the microphone is where? There? That's it. Okay. Um, well, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd like to start on a positive note by congratulating you and your council colleagues on the way in which since last year's election you've hit the ground running and faced up to a huge raft of daunting challenges, and that's even before the floods. Um, and I'd like to thank you as a Beckenham resident for the responsive alacrity with which you and the council have begun to address the flooding crisis. Um, as an administrator of the Beckenham Neighbourhood Facebook group, which now has nearly 450 members, um, I'm, I've been very keenly aware of, of the impact of the recent flooding on many residents' lives. This flooding has been the worst I've seen in over 34 years as a Beckenham resident. Um, and I think that makes it clear that the, the river's flood proneness has increased as a result of the earthquakes. So, in addition to whatever proposals emerge from the task force, I'd urge the Council to review the appropriateness of the current extent of proposed development on the Heathcote floodplain. Um, something else I'd li like to note positively is the news that completion of five of the so-called anchor products is to be deferred, um, and I welcome even more the deletion of at least two of those projects, namely the stadium and the convention centre. Um, as far as I'm concerned, they're white elephants that should be slaughtered, and I don't think I'm alone in that view. Now, the positives I've mentioned so far make some aspects of the draft annual plan all the more disappointing, to me at least. Firstly, is I'd like to mention the proposed cut of over $2 million in spending on strengthening communities. You know, over three years after the earthquakes, we, we still have traumatised people and communities throughout the city. And to, make, to propose a cut like this at a time like this see, it strikes me as shockingly callous, quite frankly. Um, the reduction in library hours is not so, so, such a vital issue, but again, it strikes me as a, a piece of mean and petty cheese pairing that will detract from residents' quality of life, especially those unable to visit a library during the working day. Um, one issue I want to focus particularly on is the proposal to eliminate walk-in service desks at Beckenham and elsewhere on Saturdays. Again, the only day when many working people are able to visit a service centre. And there are two aspects of this that I want to emphasise. One is that um, you know, eight years ago I was involved in fighting a proposal to eliminate those, those desks customer service, those customer service desks altogether. And the first time I saw this proposal, uh, my thought, first thought was, oh my God, they're at it again. And this is the thin end of a wedge. Um, one point thing that really needs to bear in mind, to be borne in mind, is that for many people, the, the staff at the service centre counters are the face of the council. They don't just deal with rate payments and dog licences. You know, over the years, I've seen countless instances of counter staff at Beckenham giving advice and help on a variety of matters. And the council's face time with residents is a vital part of the way it interacts with the people of Christchurch. And it makes an important contribution to how the council is perceived down at the grassroots. Um, but it, it seems to me that... Um, you know, something else that I'm concerned about in this proposal is the, what I see as a deceitful manner in which ratepayers are being invited to support this draft plan on the basis of a summary from which, most of this, from which this proposal has been admitted, most, um, omitted. Most people won't look at the, at, at, the, at the full document, they won't search it, they won't find this proposal. And yet, when they give their, 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 if they express support, they will be taken as supporting that proposal which they have not seen. That is sneaky, and you know it's it's ha it's a, a practice that has been that has occurred over many years, and it seems to me a system a, a show of systematic deceitfulness. Uh, that's got to change. 
Um, the last thing I want to, to, to focus on is the democracy and governance section of, of, the, of, of the draft plan, which in, may, in many ways strikes me as the most depressing of all. Um, the targets for percentage of residents who understand how the council makes its decisions and those satisfied that the council makes decisions in the best interests of Christchurch. Eight years ago, the target figures was 75%. The actual was 47%. So there's been a progressive decline both in performance and in aspiration. And this strikes me as a symptom of a management culture that really doesn't give a damn about how people out there think. Um, and that's something that I hope you and your colleagues, together with Dr. Edwards, will be able to, to, to start changing. But I suspect it will take some serious and high-level butt-kicking and head-rolling. I wish you luck. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> and thank uh, you for your attention. I would love to have uh, questions, but um, we've, we've come to the end of time. Sure. But um, uh, despite your harsh words, I know that you have come, you know, with the best of intentions. And um, I, um, I must admit that I hadn't actually looked at the um, service um, levels for the expectations around people's understanding about what we did. But um, they might actually be realistic rather than, <laughs> rather than aspirational. So, um, in fact, they might actually be aspirational. So <laughs> we might want to be better than that. <laughs> so anyway, but thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And is